Is this the ultimate generator, especially for RVers? Dual fuel, 3,500 watts, small dimensions, fairly lightweight, pretty quiet, and electric start, all for under 900 bucks. Let's find out. These were the features I was looking for in a generator when I was researching for our RV. Most of the generators were a little bit bigger, larger, more expensive. And when I came across this Genmax 3500 dual fuel unit, I thought it could be the perfect one. Genmax did send out this unit to me for review, but I reached out to them because this was the exact model, size, dimensions, everything I was looking for in a generator. So let's dig right into this thing and check it out. So first off, we do have an extremely large electrical system in our RV. It's 810 amp hours of lithium batteries with 1200 watts of solar on the roof. So that's gonna be our primary source of power while dry camping. But even as big as that system is, a few times a year we find ourselves really, really in trouble. And one of those times is when you get caught in a heat wave and you're in the 90s, close to the hundreds, and in an RV, it can be quite unbearable without AC. This year we got a puppy as well, so we have somebody else to think about. So we really did need a generator that was able to power our air conditioner. And also we wanted something that was able to recharge our batteries. We do have a large 120 amp battery charger to recharge up those big lithium batteries. So that can take anywhere from 1400 to 1500 watts of power just to recharge the batteries. And if you're completely depleted, it could take eight hours to charge up, something like that. So the first thing we were really looking for, because this is gonna be a backup option for us and we're not gonna be using it every day or every month, is we were looking for a dual fuel unit. We want to primarily run our generator on propane and then also have the option to choose gasoline if we're gonna be in a situation where maybe we're gonna run it for a week or two. Running it on gasoline is a little bit cheaper and a little bit more efficient, giving you more power. So you get the full 3,500 starting watts on gasoline and 3,200 running watts. And while you switch down to propane, you get 3,100 starting watts and 2,800 running watts. I already picked up a two and a half gallon gas can just so I'm ready in the next situation where we need to run to the gas station and get gas for it. And what's kind of nice about this unit is it has a 1.7 gallon gas tank. So if you take that to the store with you, cause it's not really that hard to lug around, two and a half gallons plus the 1.7 gallons gives us plenty of runtime. Next, let's talk about the size and weight of this unit. We had to have particular dimensions for this to fit in our truck and our RV. And most units that are 3,500 watts are much bigger than this footprint as well as much heavier. So this one is about 21 inches in length, under 20 inches in height, and about 12 inches wide. It's gotta fit underneath our tunnel cover and it just barely does. And not only is it small, but it's fairly lightweight at about 50, seven pounds dry, you can kind of carry this thing around. And the other area it had to fit was the pass-through of our RV. And I wasn't sure if it was gonna, but it fits right in there as well. I also wanna mention that it does have a telescoping handle and a set of wheels on the back. And the wheels are like a hard rubber and not like a plastic, so. Pretty decent quality. I wasn't sure what to expect. And so far, so good. Let's talk about the power. I mentioned it a little bit before, but again, gas is 3,500 starting watts with 32 running and the propane goes down a little bit to 31 and 2,800 watts. Now for our use case scenario, I wanted it to run at least one large appliance. That was the air conditioner or the battery charger. They didn't necessarily have to run at the same time, but I started looking at the smaller units around the 2000, 2200 watts, 2500 watts, and those running watts on some of those units were 1400, 1500, 1600, uh, especially when you're on propane. I don't know if I necessarily want the generator to be running at full speed the whole time. So that got me into looking uh, a little bit bigger 
and it seemed like the next popular jump up was 3500 4500 watts and those units were just so big way bigger than what we needed for a backup unit so again to get this much power in this small of a compact form really just makes a ton of sense for us being a, a great backup generator. So at around 60 decibels when this thing is running, it's not gonna be your Honda 2000 quiet, but that's fairly quiet and definitely quiet enough for us. So those were the main features I was looking for in a generator and the rest of the things are just gonna be nice to haves. And it turns out this generator has a lot of those nice to haves. Most of them are right here on the panel, so let's take a look. First off, start, stop, an electric start. That is something that's really, really nice to have. Of course, you don't need to have that, but it's always been a nice option. And the fact that this is on here with the lithium battery, that's great. Next, I really wanted to have a 30 amp plug. This is a twist lock 30 amp and it does come with the adapter. I do wish it was an actual RV plug right off here. You don't have to mess with that adapter, but this is better than nothing. So I like having that feature along with dual 120 volt outlets right here. There's a couple USB ports over here. I'm not ever gonna really charge anything that small from a generator, but it's nice to have it. If you're using this thing while camping and you wanted to charge your cell phone along with running everything else, uh, something pretty nice to have. Down here is the parallel ports. So you can actually parallel two of these together for a total of 7,000 starting watts. That's again, not something I had to have, but it's a good option that maybe in the future uh, we might we might need that much power. Right up here is the low idle switch. That's great to have to save fuel when you're not using it at full blast. Again, like I said, if we're just uh, using 1000 watts or, or 1500 watts and we can throw it on low idle and, and save some fuel, that's something we're gonna do for sure. Uh, it does come with a CO alert and as long as that functions properly, that's gonna be a really nice safety feature to have. And then also it has a really nice digital display up here that shows your hours your voltage and your load. Uh, and then it also has a fuel gauge for your gasoline as well as the frequency. A couple of lights down here as well, the power, the overload and the low oil light just in case. And then one thing I wanna mention on the side here as well, you have your, your propane hookup, but the fuel source not only has propane and gasoline but it has a stop or a shut off there and so that's going to allow you to drain the fuel out of the carburetor and since we're not using this full time that was a really great feature we wanted to have so that was most of the features that were really important to us when we were researching a generator now let's go ahead and get some oil in there hook it up to the propane and do the break-in all right, I like that this panel can be removed without any tools. It's basically just this one kind of pin, and then it pops out to give you access to everything. Here's the battery as well that needs to be hooked up, so we'll go ahead and do that while we're in here. It says it takes about half a quart of oil. It comes with a little thread-in oil funnel, which is nice. Take the dipstick out. Looks like it's pretty empty. I did notice too on some of these panels, it's got foam in there, so they're doing a good job trying to uh, make these as quiet as possible. Now there's lots of different break-in periods out there that I read about for these generators. So what I'm gonna do is just run the generator for an hour without load and then change the oil and then maybe run it for one more hour with very variable loads and then change it one more time. I like they give you a decent propane hose. Looks like it's about, I don't know, maybe five feet. It's plenty for us to use it on the tongue of our RV. Might wanna get a little wrench and just make sure that that is tight, not too tight. Okay, we have the propane hose hooked up nice and tight. I turned on my tank. There's a little primer button I'm gonna hit twice. And then I'm just gonna pull this slowly just to kind of 
lubricate the engine for a little bit. Let's try that one more time. I'll definitely say first impressions, it's a lot quieter than I expected. I don't have a decibel meter. I know there's a couple videos out on this that people show the readings from that, which is anywhere from I think 60 or 59 to 65 decibels uh, reading, which, which isn't bad at all. So I'm gonna let that run for about an hour and then I'm gonna change the oil. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and check out this oil after just over 30 minutes of idling and see what it looks like. I can already see a little bit of glitter in there. All that metal shavings, that's what we wanna get out of there. That's kind of the whole point of doing this break in. All right, so our second go with the generator went very, very smooth. I ran it for about an hour. Half of that was no load, and then the other half, I kind of varied the load a little bit between 800 watts up to 1400 watts. They say not to bring it up above 50% of its capacity for the first five hours of usage. Gonna pour it quick. Still really dirty. This is why some people change the oil two, three times just to get all of that metal shavings out of there. And I can see why. So I wanted to give my final thoughts on this generator after having it for about a month now. We just got done doing a two week straight boondocking trip in the heat of Texas and this thing worked flawlessly. I did run it off of propane the entire time and we just clocked about 14 hours on the generator which used almost an entire 30 pound cylinder. Now we didn't use it every single day, but over the two weeks we did use it uh, various times and the temps were pretty hot. So it was extremely nice to be able to run the air conditioner. And because of the size of this wattage, it still had enough to charge the batteries at the same time. Surprisingly, I did end up using the remote control. I honestly didn't think I would ever really use that, but because of the location we were at, I was able to leave the generator attached to our RV and the propane the whole time so I could just turn it on and off as needed. I wanna to touch base on the sound really quick, and here's my overall thoughts. On idle, the generator is extremely quiet, and I would say up to about half load, it is a very quiet generator to my ears. After a half a load, moving up towards the full load, it does start to work that engine quite a bit. The RPMs get higher and it is quite a bit louder. Now, it probably doesn't help that we keep it attached to the front of our RV uh, via that five foot propane hose, but just my personal thoughts on the noise of it. And last, I absolutely love the size. I love the weight and I think for the price of it and all the features that you do get, it is a really good generator. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the link down below if you wanna check it out. Otherwise, we'll see you on the next video.